Good Friday to everyone. It is Friday evening, April the 10th, 2020. And I'm Ron Hansen, one of the elders here at Mission Creek Church. And I'm going to be giving that Good Friday message this evening. I hope you're doing okay and that you're doing well in your isolation or whatever you're doing. I just want to remember that God has a wonderful plan during this time. I don't know what the full purpose that he has for us, but remember that through whatever happens, you can trust God, trust him for he has a much bigger purpose in this than we can ever realize. So trust God through it all and let him do his work in his way. And another thing about tonight, normally we would have the Lord's Supper or communion. And since we can't have it together, I'm going to encourage you to have it in your home, wherever you're at, whether you're a family, whether you're a just a married couple, or you're alone. Have the Lord's Supper. And if you just for some reason don't have grape juice or bread, use something else as a substitute. Be creative. You could use maybe graham crackers or pretzels to symbolize the Lord's body. You could use apple juice or any other kind of juice or even milk or water to symbolize the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, God is a very merciful God. He's a very loving God. He looks at the heart. Don't be like a Pharisee. You gotta stick with the letter of the law. It's gotta be this and it's gotta be that. No, God looks at the heart. He knows how you're celebrating the Lord's Supper, how you're celebrating communion, how you're celebrating his death on the cross. So even if you don't have what you consider the proper elements, go ahead and do something else and, and really worship God during this time tonight. I'd like to open up with a word of prayer and then I'll get into the message. And Lord Jesus, I do pray that you'd have your way through this message tonight. We thank you for all that you've done you went to the cross for us. You gave your blood for us. We sure appreciate it, Lord. And we do love you. So use this message to be, to, to have an impact on people's lives tonight, I pray. That salvation would come to people. Others would grow in you as a result. So thank you for what you're going to do now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to start off by saying that every one of us has an appointment that God has made. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28 says, And it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we all have an appointment that we will keep, even though none of us knows exactly when that appointment is scheduled for. And yes, that appointment is physical death. Some of you know, know that that day and time is not too far away in your life, but others of you figure, I got at least 60 good years to live. But do you really? There are people who die young, who are healthy, appear to have lots of life left. That shows we have no idea when God's appoint, appointment is for us to die. But you had better be ready for it because if you're not ready for it, you won't be able to cancel it or change it to another time. You might try to change that time by committing suicide, but you know what? If it's not the appointed time by God, you're not going to exceed, succeed in that suicide. Other times he'll let you go through the suicide and that's his appointed time for you. Well, you have a couple of questions here. You may be thinking, well, what about Enoch? What about Elijah? They didn't die. That's correct. But do you think they entered heaven with their sin-tainted body? Even though they lived a life that was totally sold out to God, sin still tainted their bodies. And there's no hint of sin that can enter heaven. They would need new bodies, just like the rest of us. So their old body had to die. And you may be thinking about King Hezekiah, who was near his appointed death time. Well, he appealed to God for 15 more years of life, and God granted his desire. And this is the only case I can think of where God uh, made a different appointment date. 
But in reality, God did not change the date because in his sovereignty, he knew that this would happen. Hezekiah should not have appealed for this extra 15 years because during that time, in the third year of that 15 years, Manasseh was born, to, born to, into the family. And it turned out that Manasseh would become a very wicked king in Judah. So eventually, Hezekiah died at his reappointed time. Manasseh took the throne at 12 years of age, and he reigned for 55 years that were mostly very evil years. So it was not a good thing that, that Hezekiah asked for those extra 15 years. I mean, if he would have died when the original appointment was, history of Judah might have been a lot different, but uh, God, God knew and he did allow Manasseh to reign even though he was very evil. So we do have our appointments. But what about Jesus? Even though he's the perfect son of God, he had no sin in his life, he still had an appointment with death. Now, I don't know how old Jesus was before he realized he was here to die for us. God the Father must have revealed him, at least a portion of the plan to him before he was 12 years old. We don't know how much God revealed as, as uh, Jesus went through life and when he did. But uh, maybe he was given the whole picture before he turned 12. I, I just don't know. But as, as that day that he was going to die got nearer, even Jesus told his father that he would like to cancel the appointment. If it were possible for him to do it, cancel it, God. So he told the father in Matthew 26, 39, here's what he said. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it be possible that this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So he did not want to go through all that God had for him to go through. He gave his desire to the Father the second time, in verse 42. This is in Matthew 26. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. And then in again, in verse 44, he talks to the Father the third time. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So Jesus was definitely not desiring that we, he would have to go, what he would have to go through in our place. But his love for the Father and his love for us compelled him to be obedient to the Father because he realized there was no other plan that, that would work in order for us to receive that great salvation that is offered to us. I'm going to read a couple short passages here from Mark chapter 14, and also from the book of Luke. And in Mark 14, it's verses 35 through 41. It says, he, And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And he comes and finds them sleeping and says to Peter, Simon, do you sleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and neither did they know what to answer him. And he comes the third time and says to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And in Luke 22, verses 41 and 42, he uh, again lets the Father know what, what his desire is. Verses 41 and 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus did not want to go through that, but he submitted to the will of the Father. 
The father knew he would have to do that. And Jesus obeyed his father. And he was willing to go through what he had to for us. So when the appointed time was come, Jesus did indeed give, him, did indeed give, him, give up of himself to do the Father's will. There he was, on that cross, hanging between two thieves, and they were on their crosses. Their appointed time to die was the same day as Jesus' appointed day to die. Now one thief was able to discern that Jesus was his only hope beyond this life. We'll find that in Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. It says, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If you be Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God, seeing you are in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we re did receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto you, Today shall you be with me in paradise. So Jesus said to the one that believed in him, He said, Today shall you be with me in paradise. But what is paradise and where is it? Well, nobody seems to have a definite answer on where and when, where paradise is and what it is. But uh, I do have a feeling that it's the same thing as Abraham's bosom that's mentioned in the Bible. And I, I feel like it's a place where believers in Jesus go for a very wonderful rest. And that's where Jesus and the redeemed thief were headed that day. Whatever it was, it's a very wonderful place to be. So let's look at the other thief. He had just as much opportunity to believe in Jesus. After all, here was Jesus right in between the two. He was able to hear Jesus just as well as the other one. But he was blinded to the fact that Jesus was right then giving his blood for the sin of both thieves. He decided to believe the lies of Satan rather than the truth of God. He did not have the deathbed conversion that the other thief enjoyed. So don't believe Satan. He's the great deceiver. He's the father of lies. And all he is is a liar. Do you really want to believe a liar? If you're not believing on Jesus, you're following a liar. And he's described in John 8.44 as also a murderer. And I'm just going to turn to John 8.44 so you can read that. So I can read the whole verse to you to see how Jesus talks about Satan, what this, what kind of a guy this he is. You are your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. So, both these thieves, they needed Jesus. One they wanted to do eternity with him, and the other without him. He followed Satan, the other one did. Here's Satan, the verse says, there's no truth in Satan. But you know what Jesus says about himself? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is full of truth. So there's Jesus on the cross, giving his lifeblood for those two thieves. But not just for those two thieves, but everyone that was witnessing this crucifixion, also for everybody that was alive in the world at that time, and also for all the people that have lived from the time that Adam lived and to those that are still to be born onto this earth. His blood is enough to save us from sin because his blood came from a perfect person, a perfect body, and he just happens to also be God. However, there's a little bit more to do to complete what he had just done. And you're going to hear about that tomorrow and also on Sunday. So come back for that conclusion. I don't want to tell you what that conclusion is right now. Because I have a feeling, but I do have a feeling that lots of you know what the conclusion is. But for those who don't, be sure not to miss tomorrow at 6 o'clock 
or Sunday morning at 6 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, or Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Come to the online church one of the next two days to complete the picture, because you will be glad you did. I need to tell you, though, that even though Jesus died, something happened that means you can trust him as your living Savior from sin and also as your Lord. Acts 16, 31 simply says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It would seem like a very easy choice to make. Believe on Jesus Christ who totally loves you and will provide for you eternal life with him. The other choice is to believe Satan and his lies. Satan cannot save you. If you would decide you would rather believe a liar than the one who's full of truth, you'll, you'll be totally separated from God once you leave this life. In fact, you'll actually be separated from him while you're living here on the earth. There's no turning back. You'll be right where Satan wants you. You'll be in misery for eternity instead of enjoying the riches of God. So admit to God that you're a sinner in need of his wonderful salvation. Your salvation will start immediately and you will have a true purpose for living the rest of your earthly life. Remember the verse I started this message with. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. There all of us will be to determine our eternal fate. So will it be that God says to you, depart from me, I never knew you, you'll be totally separated from God forever and ever and ever, and you'll be in misery if you decide to go that way. Or will you hear those words of God when he says to you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord, and you will be with your Lord for eternity. It's your choice. Let's close with prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us this choice. We can be saved. And uh, you gave us a choice. You were not robots. You, you gave us a choice. So I pray that each one listening would see that there is that need of salvation in you to have eternal life with you. And that they have that desire to be separated from Satan and his desires. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what Good Friday means as far as your death on the cross. You're giving your blood for our sins, the only way that we could be saved. So we thank you for that. We thank you for what is to come these next two days now and what you have accomplished. So give us a good rest of the evening now. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.